with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. How wonderful is the Lord our God. It is so wonderful to know Jesus. It really is. It's so wonderful to know him and to have him to walk with you, not just every now and then, but every single day of your life. In every trouble that you may find yourself, that you'll know that you're not alone. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. He's with you. He is for you. And God is in you. Every place that you go and with everything that you deal. Thanks be unto God. One of you would turn in your Bibles, Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35. And I pray that you have come with a hunger in your hearts to be able to hear from the Lord. I'm still convinced that just one word from God has the ability to transform your life. Just, just one word can give you an epiphany of God's divine will for you. It can really show you himself in a, in a very real way. God can invade the natural with his supernatural and transform your whole mindset and everything that could ever hold you back in your life. Genesis chapter 35, beginning with verse 16. Notice there the word of the Lord. Then they journeyed from Bethel, and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, Rachel labored in childbirth, and she had hard labor. Now it came to pass that when she was in hard labor that the midwife said to her, Do not fear, you will have this son also. And so it was, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni. But his father called him Benjamin. And so Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And I'm talking today from the subject, turning pain into power. Turning pain into power. You cannot live this life without experiencing pain. Every woman who is a mother knows that birthing involves pain. You cannot get around it. Uh, whenever we grow, you experience what's called growing pains, growing pains. Pain is a sign that uh, we are growing in some areas, that we are moving out of our comfort zone, that we are shattering the status quo in our life, that you are expanding. Uh, it is our pain that lets us know that something is in disorder so that it can come into a greater order. If there were no pain, we would never really fully change in our lives. And so notice that as they journeyed from Bethel, from Bethel, Bethel, uh, when there was but a little distance to go to Ephratah, Rachel labored, she labored in childbirth. If you're ever going to birth anything in this world, you're going to have to labor. You must labor in order to enter into rest. Now, if you're trying to rest and you've never gone into labor, you're out of order. She had hard labor. Do you notice that in verse 16? She had hard labor. Anybody ever felt that this thing that you're doing called life is hard? You do have hard labor. Now, nobody ever told you that it was going to be easy. I know Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. He said, my yoke is easy. He didn't say yours was. He said, my yoke is easy. It take mine. He says, yours is hard, but mine is easy. He says, that's why he, he said, let's do this divine exchange here. My yoke is easy, but your labor is hard. Your labor is hard. She had hard labor, hard labor. I know it's hard, but don't give up just because it's hard. Endure the hard labor. Don't quit because it's hard. Quit because you get finished. Quit because you get through. Quit because you give birth. Don't stop in the midst of hard labor. I'm so glad that God did not give women the option of just saying, Lord, just forget the baby. Forget, forget it. I don't, I don't want to be a mother now. Uh, this contraction, I, I, uh, I've had enough of that. Uh! 
Just forget that I ever said that I wanted to be a mother. Forget, forget that. It, it, would be, it would be odd if God would just say, okay, you know, I'm just going to take the baby out now. You know, it's like you were just, somebody was twisting your arm behind your back and then you say, uncle, I, I give up. And then he would just take it out. But no, you have to endure. Endure, the Bible t tells us in Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness. It didn't even say to pray to get out of it. Are you listening? There are certain things in this life that are just hard. Deal with it. Now, I'm just trying to give you a reality check today. Uh, life is not a flowery bed of ease. If you're going to do anything that is substantial, if you're going to do anything that is meaningful, if you're going to do anything that is lasting, if you're going to do anything that is worthy, it's going to be hard at certain parts, at certain junctures. And there are going to be some hard areas on the journey that's just hard. And if I can just make it up this hill, the whole journey is not a hill. There are some that are downhill. There are some that are curves. There are some that are straight. But, uh, it will have some areas that are hard. Most people get wiped out in the curves, not the straightaways. They, they give out when they have a hill to try to deal. You have to endure it. Endure hardness. She had hard labor. And notice it says when she was in hard labor, the midwife said to her, do not fear, you will have this son also. You will have this son also. And today, I'm going to be a midwife to you. I'm not a woman, but I'm going to be a midwife to you today because I believe that you are pregnant with something that feels like it's killing you. And, and, and you need the voice of a midwife saying to you, listen, you are going to have this, this thing also. You, you're going to have this, this son also. You're going to give birth. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. I know it's hard, but you're going to make it through this. You need some midwives in your life that help you to endure. I know you want to quit. I know you want to throw in the towel. I know you want to leave him or her. You, you, you said, I'm, I'm done. I've had enough of this. I'm sick of their mouth. Uh, it, it's, it's, this is too hard. I didn't sign up for all of this. I'm so glad that God did not show you everything that you were going to have to go through ahead of time because you never would have signed up for it. You never would have said, I do. You never would have accepted the job. You never would have moved to Atlanta. You never would have been in the place where you are right now. I'm glad that he didn't show you everything that you would go through. I'm glad he didn't show you all of the trouble because you need somebody to let you know, listen, don't worry about this thing. You are going to have this thing also. You're going to birth your business also. You will have this baby also. This thing is going to live also. You're going to write your book also. You're going to produce your album also. Listen, you are going to do this. You're going to have this thing also. You've got to give birth, but it's hard. It is hard. Uh, uh, the, the whole idea behind being a professional, a professional has the ability to make it look easy. If they look like they're struggling and all of that, it, it, it's just then they're amateurs. Have you ever noticed the feats that those folks do, those acrobats in the uh, Cirque du Soleil? Have you ever noticed how smooth and graceful they are? Have you ever tried to do some of those back-bending moves? Have you ever noticed the grace with which they do it? It just looks so fluid and so easy as though they've got strings or something that's just helping them to move that way. It takes incredible strength. They make something that is difficult look so easy. And, and that's the way that it is with a lot of successful people. It, it looks so easy until you try it. And then nobody ever told you that when you launch your business that you're going to have a problem with employees and that somebody's going to steal from you and some folks are going to be lazy. You wish that you could hire everybody who was as motivated as you are, but some people are just lazy. And there are a myriad of issues that you're going to deal with. Nobody told you that when you got the car that you were going to deal with a lemon of a motor. No, nobody ever told you that you were going to have a wreck down the road. Nobody ever told you that marriage is not that you just get married and live happily ever after. That sometimes things happen along the journey. But you need a midwife to say, listen, when it gets really hard, when you can barely breathe in between contractions, 
You need a midwife to say, listen, don't worry about this thing. Don't worry because you're going to have this son also. And it was so that as her soul was departing, for she did die, there are certain things that will kill you as you know yourself. But this, let me just remind you that you will never grow beyond the level of pain that you are willing to tolerate. You'll never grow beyond the level of pain that you're willing to tolerate in your life. You will either increase your tolerance for pain or you're going to end up decreasing the size of your vision. They're the only two choices that you have. You have to either increase your tolerance for pain or you have to decrease the size of your vision. And, and, and let me tell you, don't shrink your vision to be able to tolerate the pain, to say, you know what, this is too much responsibility. Don't, don't ask for a lighter load, in other words. Ask for a stronger back. Because some of the journey is hard. But pain has the power to be able to precipitate change in your life. Pain has the power to be able to precipitate change in your life. I love something that John F. Kennedy said. He said, change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future. You see, a person will change when he or she receives enough that they're able to change. You'll change when you receive enough that you're able to change. I know some of you would love to change cars right now, but you haven't received enough to change. Some of you want to get out of where you live right now. You want to move into another house, but you haven't received enough to be able to change. You've got to be able to receive enough that you're able to change. Uh, you know, you might be tired of wearing the same clothes and the same shoes, but you have not received enough to be able to change. You can change when you receive enough that you're able to change. Secondly, you'll change when you learn enough that you want to change. A person will change when he or she learns enough that he or she wants to change. Once you find out that there is a better way that you don't have to live this way. When you learn enough and your desire becomes strong enough because you realize there is an alternative to living the way that I'm living right now, when you learn enough that you want to change, then you can change. And the third thing is that a person can change when he or she hurts enough that he or she has to change. When you realize that, you know, this thing is killing me. I got to do something. If you wear shoes too small long enough, at some point, you know, you're going to realize, you know, this, this is not working. You know, when you've been not able to push yourself away from the table and you're getting bigger but your clothes are not? I mean, that's only so long that you can squeeze into stuff when you are constantly getting bigger and your clothes are remaining the same size. After a while, you become uncomfortable. And, and, and you, have to, you have to buy some stronger binders. <laughs> they do have them available. But you have a problem when you keep getting bigger and your clothes are not growing with you. That's why women most of the time have four and five different sizes <laughs> in the closet. Ladies, just keep looking straight ahead. And the only reason that you got a bigger size is because you were tired of having something on where you were scared that if you bent over, you were going to rip your zipper out of the back. <laughs> and buttons were going to pop off of this. And it became uncomfortable. And so when you hurt enough that you have to change, then you'll change. You notice that the word Bethel, Bethel, notice, Bethel means house of God, the house of God. You will, you will notice, it's, it's very interesting here. I want you to just see this, this revelation. Notice in verse 16, then they journeyed from Bethel. They journeyed from Bethel, from the house of God. It's interesting to note that something happened as they journeyed from the house of God. Have you ever left church and something happened on your way from church? 
they, they journeyed as they left the house of God. They were on their way to Ephratah, which is Bethlehem. You know what the word Bethlehem means? House of bread. Bethlehem means house of bread. Now, now I want you to notice this because we go on this journey every week. We leave Bethel, the house of God, going to Bethlehem, the house of bread. As soon as you leave the house of God, you're going to eat. <laughs> I, am I interpreting the Bible? Am I, I mean, it's right in your Bible. As they journeyed, they left Bethel, the house of God, on their way to Bethlehem, the house of bread. Isn't it amazing how you're always ready to eat when you leave Bethel? You're trying to find a Bethlehem somewhere, somebody's house where there is some food, with, and hopefully they know how to cook. But when you leave Bethel, you want to go to Bethlehem. When you leave the house of God, you're looking for a house of bread because you're ready to throw down. And, and this was the case with Rachel. Rachel had just left Bethel. She'd had an encounter with God. And isn't it amazing when you have an encounter with God and, and all of a sudden, on your way to the house of bread, you go into labor, hard labor. And so God calls you from his house to another house. And oftentimes something happens between the call. But I want, to rest, I want you to rest assured that God will never call you to a place where he is not already present. He will never call you to a place where he is not already present. If he ever calls you to go to a certain place, God is already there. If he calls you to a higher level of success, he's already there. If he calls you to leave one city and go to another city, God is already there. God will never call you to go to a place where he is not already present. There's no reason to worry. Even if your children, if they have gone off to school, if they've been called there, God is already there. Where can you go that he is not? Where can I flee from your presence? They can leave your presence, but they can't leave his. When, when you are with God, he will never, ever call you to a place where he is not already present. And so here Rachel was. She was pregnant, and she went into labor. Have you ever had something to start coming in your life, but it was coming too soon and you couldn't stop it. Have you ever been into that place? Something was coming too soon and you couldn't stop it. You're like, oh, no, no, not, not, not now, not now. My mother was sitting in church one Sunday when her water broke with one of her children. You know, the first thing that you want to say is, no, no, not, not now, not now. I mean, I asked her, I said, mama, what did you do? You know, back in that day, you lifted a finger. <laughs> Her water had broken. Have you ever been in a situation where something broke in you and it was coming too soon and you couldn't stop it? It's almost like what happens with the animal kingdom, how, how a lioness who goes out and does the killing and brings it back home to the Mac Daddy lion. <laughs> you do know mama lions, they bring home the bacon. They bring it home. But she's very stealthy in her hunting approach where she looks very carefully at her prey. It's amazing how she's looking at the prey that she wants to get and she loves to be able to find a mother who is pregnant and about to deliver. The lioness can somehow tell when it's prey, if it's a gazelle, if it's a deer, they can tell when the animal is pregnant and about to deliver. The, the lioness will lie in wait and wait for the mother to go into labor where it is coming and she cannot stop it because then the prey is then defenseless to be able to defend itself from the lion. You can't be delivering a baby and getting up and running away from a lion. So the lion will lie in wait and wait good until its prey is in labor, 
giving birth and then comes the lion so that he not only gets the mother but the baby isn't it amazing how the adversary who comes as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour he's looking he's going up and down and to and fro he's imitating the way of the cross up and down and to and fro seeking whom can I devour he knows if a person is a powerful worshiper he knows if they are a powerful intercessor I have nothing in them I can't touch them I can aggravate them I can mess with stuff I can delay stuff but I cannot stop their destiny I can he knows who he can kill and who he cannot and that's why he has to check them out to see is this one praying is this one filled with the word is this one walking in faith and obedience he's looking to see do I have carnality in this one I'm looking for flesh I'm looking for flesh I'm looking for somebody that is walking in the flesh he smells carne he's looking for the meat he's looking for somebody who is living by their flesh seeking whom he may devour and he loves it he absolutely loves it if he can find somebody who's walking in their flesh but pregnant with purpose pregnant with potential pregnant with power he's looking for somebody that is carrying something that is bigger than what it is itself he wants your vision he wants your business he wants your son and your daughter he's looking for that thing you have to be careful when the enemy is after you looking for your goods or what you're carrying he smells pregnant folks and that's who he goes after it's interesting but have you ever felt like what you were carrying was too much for you and it was about to kill you? May I just say to you that it is time to merely stop asking God to just bless you. It's time now for you to bless your own birth, to birth your own blessing. It's birthing time now. It's time to crouch down and to get into a birthing position and to birth what God has been germinating in your spirit. Birth what's been going over in your mind. Birth your dreams and your vision that you've been thinking about it. And, and when you're saying, one day I'm going to, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, at some point this thing comes and it grows in you to the degree that you've got to birth this thing out. It is hard labor. You might be able to make it look easy. Somebody else that inspired you might have made it look easy, but it's not as easy as it looks. But you've got to birth it anyway, even though it is hard labor. And it's okay if it kills you. I'm here as your midwife today to say you shall have this son. You will have this one. It's, don't worry. He says, listen, fear not. You're going to have this one also. You're going to have this baby also. It might fe feel like it's, this one is going to kill you, but you're going to have this baby also. You're going to have this thing even if it kills you. And it's a good thing if it kills you. It's okay if you die in the process. I just want to tell you, remember we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and by not loving our lives to death. Because when you birth this thing, you got to lose your life the way that you've known it. It's okay if the old person dies in the process. The old person was selfish anyway. And when you birth something, the new you has to be selfless. The old you was a taker, but the new you has to be, as a mother, has to be a giver. The old you was a follower, but the new you has to be a leader. The old you was grumpy and impatient, but the new you has to be patient and kind. I want to tell you today it's time now to give birth to your legacy give birth to your legacy why were you put here on the earth you were not here just to inhale and to exhale it's time now for you to leave the house of God Bethel when you leave God's house you ought to be pregnant with something you ought to be pregnant with something God ought to be dropping bombs in your spirit something ought to be exploding in you when you hear the Word of God something ought to strike your spirit and make you said it's my time now it is my time it's my time I'm gonna have my baby I know it's hard but I'm willing to do it I'm gonna fight this fight I understand that it is a fight I know that I'm going into a fight but I'm a victor you don't become a victor without having a fight there's something that you've got to have to overcome nothing becomes great until it overcomes opposition absolutely nothing and so give birth to your legacy. Don't wait for somebody to give you something. You give birth. Birth your own blessing. Stop asking folks for a handout. Don't waste your time begging for what you have the power to earn. Ask God to give you earning power. Don't 
beg for somebody else's blessing, birth your own blessing. I don't want anybody else's blessing. I want you to be satisfied. You can be rest assured. I don't care what you have. I don't want your blessing. I want my blessing. There is a blessing with your name on it. There's something that is reserved for you. Nobody else can do it just like you can. You're designed for it. You're built for it. You're built with the vocal cords to be able to do it like nobody else can do it. You got the right height, the right width. You got everything that God has skilled you for this time, for this place, to be what God has called you to be and to do what God has called you to do. It's time to birth your, les your legacy. Touch three people and tell them, birth your legacy. Birth your legacy. Birth it, birth it, birth it. Birth something that will outlive you. Birth something that will outlive you. I've told you that one of the reasons that the devil wants your, your birthing what you're birthing, he wants what you're birthing because the devil has no reproductive power. He has no reproductive power. So he has, the only way that he can increase his ranks is that he has to recruit. He must recruit other folks. Because he has no, no, no power to reproduce. He has to recruit. He has to recruit. May I tell you that there are some folks in this place today. There are some Ruths in this house today. And Ruth almost died. But she went on because her first husband didn't produce a thing for her. She was barren. She never had a baby with her first husband. And he died on her. But God brought a Boaz into her life. And after she got through her issues, she had this woman was able to come to a birthing place where she conceived something that would be in the lineage of Jesus the Christ because she pressed on beyond what died in her life. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.